What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon News Day Tuesday. It's been a couple of weeks away and we have some interesting news. Challenge Family continues to compete with Iron Man. Iron Man? Not doing so hot in the money department and we're trying to grow our sport by getting younger kids into triathlon. Let's get into it. What's up triathletes? Welcome to Newsday Tuesday where every single Tuesday as long as there is news to talk about and I'm not traveling which has both been the case over the last couple of weeks we talk about what's going on in the triathlon world as always make sure you stick around to the end where we share everyone's favorite part of triathlon news day that's a story from the trainiac community and as always full links to everything we discuss will be in the description below now, Challenge family of races, say like Challenge Roth, Challenge Daytona, this is really the only company out there in the world that is competing and doing seemingly fairly well against Iron Man. And what Challenge Family announced last week is that they are going to have a series of Challenge Family awards for all of their various races. Now, this is very much in line with what Iron Man does, where athletes are going to vote on things like, I need the list because it's long best race venue, best swim course, best bike course, best run course, best fans, best pasta party, best finish line party. I would put in a special vote for Challenge Roth. Best new race, best after race food, most eco-friendly race, most family-friendly race. These are things that Iron Man has already done, but Challenge Family is starting to do it. Now, the challenge with Challenge Family wasn't planning that, is that as opposed to Iron Man, where all of the races are run by Iron Man itself, one entity to rule them all, besides like a couple here and there around the world, Challenge Family operates more like franchises, where each single race competes with all the others, sort of under the same brand. Interesting, I don't know if it's gonna make any difference, but we'll see how it pans out. Now, we gotta talk about Iron Man. Iron Man is owned by a company called the Wanda Sports Group. Wanda Sports Group IPO'd its division earlier this year, and I did an analysis that when they filed the SEC regulatory submissions for the IPO to go public and become a traded stock, it didn't look like they made a heck of a lot of money. Now what we've seen in quarter three of this year, this is July, August, and September that even though revenues grew for Wanda Sports Group, they took losses. And this is what we're seeing is that sure, revenues have been growing over a number of years and Iron Man and all these sporting companies have continued to expand, but they haven't been able to actually make money off of it. And what I had believed before is that this was kind of just accounting and that they were stripping out the profits to go back to the parent company that owns Wanda Sports Group. But now that it's a publicly traded company, they're not gonna be able to get away with that if that's what was the case because they're going to have public shareholders to answer to. And one of two things are gonna happen. Either it is going to become wildly profitable because they can't do these business tactics sending profits away if that is what's happening, or the stock is gonna go in the tank because it's not actually a profitable business. That seems to have been the case because since the IPO, the stock is down 60%. Not great. Glad I recommended that people probably stay away from that. Next, USA Triathlon in their quest to continue to grow triathlon, they have just announced the Splash Spin and Sprint program partnering with schools and they're going to be trying to get more kids age six to 12 into the sport of triathlon to help grow it. Now, I think that this is a great idea. It's very similar to what we've seen work fairly well up in Canada with curling and it's where you have to grow the sport. If you focus on nothing but old people, by the time people become older and get into time of life where they can consider doing triathlons, they won't have been conditioned that triathlon is cool. So I think that this is a great idea. Get them while they're young. Now let's get into some of the race results from the week because there actually were quite a few. Ironman 70.3 Western Sydney was won by Max Neumann and Hannah Wells. Interesting story about Hannah Wells. I met her in Kona and actually 
drove, I think, all of her bikes and luggage to where she was staying with Jocelyn McCauley. So congratulations to her and her coach, Bevan McKinnon from Fitter Radio. Shout out to fellow podcaster. Iron Man Cozumel was won by Tyler Butterfield and Carrie Lester and Tim O'Donnell, who finished second in Kona, just had to finish the race to validate his spot, so he is on his way to Kona in 2020. And Ironman Arizona had a pro women only race going on there, which was won by Sarah Crowley, and Meredith Kessler and Heather Jackson also punched their tickets to Kona. In addition to that, huge shout out to my friend Nicole Walker, who is my former training partner, went away from the sport due to some illness and injury, since had a kid and is now back. She made her debut on the weekend and won. Overall amateur, finishing I believe seventh overall in a time of 9.30, personal best for her. She is being coached by our pal Paul Larson, who I spent last week with, who is the colleague of Dan Plews, and like, it's just coming together. I'm gonna have a training partner again, and a really fast one who's gonna pound me into submission. I don't know if I'm looking forward to that, but congratulations, Nicole. So awesome to have you back. And finally, the 26th annual Laguna Phuket Triathlon happened, which draws a lot of the top names from around the world, even though it's not an ITU or an Ironman event. And it was won by Rudy Wilde and Imogen Simmons. Update, segue into the podcast. We just interviewed Imogen Simmons last week. We also just interviewed Paul Larson while I was in Kelowna to talk about a lot about like how people structure their zones, their training. Is fat oxidation and a low carb lifestyle something that people should consider? Who might it not work for? Who didn't it work for? Really good podcast. And we just published a no back pain ever with the founder of Foundation Training. And um, we got some good ones. We got some really good Triathlon Terran podcast coming up. All right, let's get into the Trainiac story of the week that goes, hey, my name is Chad Beer <laughs> from Beaver, Pennsylvania, and I'm 46 years old. My son and I were flipping through the channels one night and we came across the Kona 2017 Ironman race on TV and thought it was the coolest thing. I told my son that I was gonna do that someday. My wife overheard this and said, no, you will break yourself. But the next day I looked up triathlon on YouTube and I found you and subscribed instantly. Thank you very much, Chad. We worked very hard to make that happen. I found a sprint distance race in June of 2018 and started teaching myself how to swim. And I got a road bike to race and train on. I raced four sprint triathlons in the 2018 season and had a blast doing it, finishing one of them 13th overall out of 395 and second in my age group. Now. The unfortunate, well, fortunate part, I got a great job offer to relocate over 300 miles away from where I was currently living, and I took it. I was away from my beautiful wife and kids for two months, which wasn't easy, but I kept training as best I could. With the new job being so demanding, I was only able to focus on running. I did not have time to swim or bike, so I had to give up my triathlon season for 2019, but we'll be back in 2020 with a vengeance and the goal to dominate my age group wearing my new Trainiac kit. Yeah. Until then, I've been focusing on running and I'm now putting in 40 plus miles per week. On Thanksgiving day in 2018, I did a 5K in Florida coming ninth overall out of 400 plus runners. I was visiting my father and it meant the world to him to finally see me race after all these years. This race season, I want to hit a sub 19 in the 5K, then race a few half marathons, looking to be around the 132 range or better. Another goal is to race a 70.3 someday, and I have to thank my beautiful wife for all that she does in supporting me. Without her, I would be nothing, not just in triathlon. I call her NTD, no triathlon, Dawn. Again, thank you so much for all that you do, and I look forward to your videos and hope to meet you someday. Me too, Chad. You have an excellent name and a great perspective on the sport. I think people feel pressure to constantly race over and over and always race more and race longer, and they see people on Instagram that are racing like 10 half Ironmans in a year. But if you're having fun just being an endurance athlete of some sort with whatever life gives you at the time, I think that that's great. More people should have that attitude. So congratulations to you. Thanks for sending in that question. And if all of you like watching Triathlon Newsday and you aren't yet subscribed, 
hit that subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.